terrible loss of life and widespread devastation in Pakistan. Record-breaking rainfall flooded a third of the country and the consequences will last for months. Developing countries are the most vulnerable to climate dangers, but everyone is at risk. If you're in the financial centre of a wealthy nation, climate change may seem like rather a vague problem for distant parts of the world. And you may think there's a humanitarian case to help them. But for now, let's focus instead on some highly practical, hard-headed reasons why it's clearly in the interests of rich nations to do far more to help poorer ones adapt to a more hostile climate. First, supply chains. Felixstowe, here in eastern England, receives ships around the clock. We depend on a globalised and highly integrated system. What this means is that trade is incredibly easily disrupted by Covid, for example, or Russia invading Ukraine, or the sister ship of this one blocking the Suez Canal. But more and more often, it's extremes of weather that are causing trouble, and they're becoming more severe. We've seen it during Covid, how connected the world is, and also how impacted the world can be if uh, global supply chains are disrupted. Well, that's exactly what we see unfolding with regard to the climate crisis. But in fact, we see this on steroids. The S&P 500, if you look at just those 500 companies, listed companies, 40% uh, of them have already experienced some kind of supply chain disruption. So this is not theoretical, it's actually occurring. Earlier this year, the port of Durban was wrecked by flooding. It's Southern Africa's largest trading gateway and an export route for the world's biggest source of cobalt. Cobalt is essential for electronics, but the storm cut off supplies. And the first thing that happens when there's disruption of the kind that climate change will make more likely is that prices go up of key commodities and components. And that increase in cost is felt very rapidly right around the world. When flooding paralysed Bangkok in 2011, major industries were shut down and the global prices for cars, cameras and phones shot up. The same with crops. When supplies are tight, the cost of food increases dramatically. We saw that when Russia invaded Ukraine. As soon as that supply got cut off, the world prices for, for grain, wheat, etc., skyrocketed, not to mention that we start, started seeing shortages on shelves. So very real example of a, a shock on the supply side. That's just one moment in time in a very acute way. But climate change is f affecting that all over the world. No country is immune to that. So how do we adapt to climate change? Well, the immense Thames barrier is one example. It keeps London safe from flooding and it's being used far more than expected. Here's the problem. Global temperatures are increasing, which means the level of the sea is rising and storms are intensifying, which means that every major port and city around the world is going to need to be far better protected. The problem is that the level of finance needed to achieve that is nowhere near what's needed. For a start, warning systems for extreme weather have to be improved. Farming needs to be more resilient to droughts and floods. And new defences must be built against rising waters. And investing now makes good sense. If you have more resilient uh, uh, infrastructure, then the cost of, of sort of this weather events is not as, as, as high as it will be otherwise. And so essentially, rather than looking for a trillion dollars post the event, you find a hundred billion before the event to sort of put in place the kind of infrastructure that is needed. We do know that in the coming years, there are gonna be more catastrophic weather events that will have a knock-on effect on all of us. And we also know there's a great range of potential solutions. What's missing is the political will to raise the right amount of money to help tackle this. And surely, it makes much more sense to act now rather than leave it 
till everything gets far worse. The staggering damage caused by Hurricane Ian in Florida is a reminder of the cost of inaction. Climate change made the storm more destructive, and we've been warned, others will follow.